to all so let's start with the resuscitation equipment in icu intensive care unit equipment includes patient monitoring respiratory and cardiac support pain management emergency resuscitation devices and other life support equipments they are designed to care for patients who are seriously injured have a critical or life threatening illness or have undergone a major surgical procedure thereby requiring 24 hour care and monitoring so let's see the types of devices patient monitoring devices then life support and emergency resuscitation devices and diagnostic devices so let's go to the patient monitoring equipment it includes arterial line bedside monitor blood pressure device blood pressure monitor ecg that is electrocardiograph machine electroencephalograph that is eeg machine intracranial pressure monitor pulse oximeter glucometer life support and emergency resuscitation devices that includes mechanical ventilator laryngoscope airway infusion pump crash cart that is also called as resuscitation cart intra aortic balloon pump that is iabp continuous positive air pressure machine that is cpap machine defibrillator diagnostic equipment it includes mobile x-ray units portable clinical lab devices bronchoscope colonoscopy endoscope gastroscope so other icu equipments it includes urinary catheter urinary drainage collector suction catheter ng tube iv line or catheter feeding tube breathing tube that is endotracheal tube so let's go to the arterial line we will see one by one arterial line placement is a common procedure in various critical care settings intraarterial blood pressure measurement is more accurate than the measurement of bp by non invasive means especially in the critically ill patients so patients may require an arterial line for what monitoring continuous blood pressure especially in patients with hemodynamic instability when vasoactive medications are uh, needed and the responses to such medications require continuous blood pressure monitoring for patients who require prescribed blood sampling so uh, complication associated with arterial lines that is hemorrhage air emboli infection altered skin integrity impaired circulation so let's go to the central iv catheters that is also central venous catheter is a special iv line that is inserted into a large vein in the body several veins are used for central venous catheters including those located in the shoulder that is subclavian vein neck jugular vein and groin that is femoral vein as we are seeing here in the picture that is jugular vein so what is the purpose when the patient either does not have adequate veins in the arms or need needs special medications and or nutrients that cannot be given through the smaller arm veins so it also serve as a guide of fluid balance in critically ill patients to determine the function of the right side of the heart so what is the nurse's role in the patient with central lines monitor for the signs of complication we should always monitor the patient for the complications we should also assess the patency of the cvp line then sterile dressing should be done to prevent infection the length of the intervening catheter should be recorded and regularly monitored also we should follow stick as stick techniques when handling with cvc so next we will go to the bedside monitor a bedside monitor is the display of major body functions on a device that looks like a television screen or computer monitor the monitor is attached to wires called leads at the other end the leads are attached to sensing devices attached to the patient's body the sensing device sends electronic signals to the monitor which displays the readings for the specific body function being monitored so the monitor is typically used when the doctor wants to measure functions like the heart rate respiratory rate blood pressure and temperature next go to the ecg that is electrocardiographic it is a uh, monitoring is routinely used to in hospitals for patient with a wide range of cardiac and non cardiac diagnosis 
Besides simple monitoring of heart rate and detection of life-threatening arrhythmias, the goals of ECG monitoring it includes detection of myocardial ischemia, diagnosis of complex arrhythmia, and identification of a prolonged QT interval. Next go to the EEG that is electroencephalography. It is a technique for recording and interpreting the electrical activity of the brain. The measurements given by an EEG are used to confirm or rule out various conditions. It includes seizure disorders, head injury, encephalitis, brain tumor, memory problems, stroke, etc. So next we will go to the intracranial pressure monitor. Patients with brain injury of any etiology are at risk for developing increased intracranial pressure. So acute intracranial hypertension is a medical emergency requiring immediate intervention to prevent uh, permanent damage to the brain. So intracranial pressure data from electronic monitoring equipments are usually calculated and recorded hourly in the clinical chart by trained nurses. So potential complication associated with ICP monitoring it includes infection and brain hemorrhage which are mostly infrequent. So next go to the pulse oximetry. Pulse oximetry is universally used for monitoring patients in the critical care setting. A pulse oximeter is the device that measures and displays the oxygen arterial saturation that is SpO2. Glucometer as we all know to check the blood glucose level. Next we will go to the life support and emergency resuscitation devices. So mechanical ventilator. Mechanical ventilator is a positive or negative pressure breathing device that can maintain ventilation and oxygen delivery for a prolonged period. Nurses, physicians and respiratory therapists must understand each patient's specific pulmonary needs and work together to set a realistic goals. So what are the indications for mechanical ventilation? If a patient has a continuous decrease in oxygenation and increase in arterial carbon dioxide levels and a persistent acidosis, Mechanical ventilation may be necessary for these kind of patients. Then conditions such as thoracic or abdominal surgery, drug overdose, neuromuscular disorders, inhalation injury, COPD cases, multiple trauma, shock, multisystem failure and coma also. The patients also may lead to respiratory failure. So they also are in need of mechanical ventilator. So let's see the nursing care of patient with mechanical ventilator. To promote effective airway clearance, the nurses always should be careful and having the suction, do the suction appropriately. To, and also we should also prevent trauma and infection. Provide frequent position every two hourly, we have to give the, we have to change the position. And maintain ventilator tube patency and secure properly to avoid displacement. And also we should provide oral care two to three times per day. And we should assess respiratory, cardiovascular and neurological system every hourly. So uh, also we should also review of communications, check ventilator setting. We have to check daily ABGs. Then we should assess for pain. We should also assess for prevent infection. Then identify and prevent complication associated with mechanical ventilator. Additional equipment also should be available in the bedside. That is intubation equipment, oxygen wall and uh, portable supplies and battery operated suction unit. So next we are going to the IV infusion pump. An external infusion pump is a medical device used to deliver medications and fluids into a patient's body in the controlled manner. Infusion pumps may be capable of delivering medications and fluids in the large or small amounts and may be used to deliver nutrition or medications such as insulin or other hormones, antibiotics, chemotherapy, drugs and pain relievers. So there are um, different types of um, uh, Different types of uh, ex uh, infusion pumps are available that is enteral pump that is pump used to deliver liquid nutrition and medications to a patient digestive tract. Patient controlled analgesia that is PCA pump. A pump used to deliver pain medication which is equipped with a feature that allows patients himself to itself administer a controlled amount of medication. Insulin pump. A pump typically used to deliver insulin to patients with diabetes. Insulin pumps are mostly frequently used in the home settings. So what is the nurse's role in patient with IV infusion pump? We should use a septic technique and we should also follow universal precautions. Uh, we should monitor the pump and patient frequently to ensure correct operation 
you should also keep the pump plugged in and when possible to ensure that the battery is fully charged at all times you should also set the flow rate as prescribed calculating the amount of fluid you should observe for the signs of any infiltration or other complications such as thrombophlebitis fluid or electrolyte overload and embolism before administration so let's go to the resuscitation card what are the things inside so let us see the contents of the resuscitation card contains all of the equipment and medications needed for the advanced life support and cpr that is cardiopulmonary resuscitation what is the purpose to enhance the hot fluid team's response to patients with emergency medical situations by providing immediate access to supplies and medications so when there is an emergency card it is a um, valuable we can save the valuable time to take care of the patient those who are coming in emergency situations so it is also to help ensure a properly stocked emergency card will be readily available when there is uh, the defibrillator all the working machine should be checked and properly kept so what are the contents registration card we should monitor there should be a monitor defibrillators suction devices and bag wall mask of different sizes then advanced cardiac like support drugs such as epinephrine atropine amiodarone lidocaine sodium bicarbonate dopamine and vasopressin drugs for rapid sequent infection intubation succinylcholine or another paralytic or a sedative such as etomidine or midazolam endotracheal tubes and other intubating equipment there should be a different sizes of et tubes should be there drugs for peripheral and central venous access then pediatric equipments also should be there so next next almost we should have defibrillator so i hope everyone understand the topic if you have any doubts you can um comment give the comments okay thank you all thank you so much for listening